Welcome, my name is Paul Mitchell. I'm a professor here in the Department of Agriculture and Applied Economics at the University of Wisconsin. I'm also an Extension State Specialist. I'm director of the Rank Agribusiness Institute and co-director of the Nutrient and Pest Management Program. Today, what I'm gonna do is go over the slides I presented at the um, Wisconsin Ag Outlook Forum in January of 2017. Um, they'll be broken into three major parts. Um, my talk is overall called the 2016 um, Farm Income and um, 2017 Outlook um, for Cost. I'm going to talk about the Wisconsin and the U.S. farm income projections for 2016. We're just um, about being announced there um, in January. Then I'll talk about projected 2017 costs and, and what we see is negative margins for um, major crops, corn and soybean, and for dairy farmers for many of them in 2017 coming ahead. And overall, the implication is that farmers are financially stressed, but so far the data seem to show a lot of farmers are managing it, but it's definitely a lot of financial stress. What this is, is USDA data that comes out every year in November, um, almost December 1st, and it shows farm income. Um, we'll focus on net farm income, which adjusts for depreciation and some other non-cash costs. And you can see it's down projected for 2016, the third year in a row, $67 billion. This is cash receipts from all the crops. You can see corn has been down four years in a row. Soybeans has been down several years. It bumped up last year with great yields. Nationally, fruit and nuts are down. Vegetables and melons are flat. Wheat is down. Cotton is down. This is um, for the data for um, livestock. Cattle and calves have been down for two years in a row. Dairy down two years in a row. Broilers down two years in a row. Hogs down two years in a row. These are all the cash receipts, and you can see the farm economy is, is not bringing as much money, largely due to lower prices. Um, lower prices under the new farm bill for crops especially generate ARC payments, agricultural risk coverage. Um, these are the payments that we, under the 2014 farm bill. What you can see in the, in the data here is the national numbers and how the last few years um, they've gone up in 2015 and again in now 2016. Um, what you see um, is that dark or light green band is the ARC payments nationally, and Wisconsin got its share. Um, and for 2016, um, farmers received $198 million in the state of Wisconsin. This would be four losses or low income in 2015 is when these payments come out. Um, these are very handy payments for a lot of farmers. This is the same data now, but broken out for corn here at the county level. And what you can see is how many dollars per base acre farmers received in Wisconsin. You can see across the southern Wisconsin here, we have a lot of farmers receiving over $70 an acre. This would be $70 a base acre for corn and for the 2015 crop year received in 2016. You look at soybeans, um, again, southern Wisconsin. You also get some up here in northeastern Wisconsin, but payments are about $50 a base acre or more for these high, high return regions or high payout regions. Um, here's wheat. Um, payments are lower, but again, a band of Wisconsin received um, probably $40 or more per base acre in payments. That's where these um, uh, $200 million roughly went out um, in the state. And these are payments for low income at the, or low revenue at the um, county level would trigger these payments. It would generate primarily for, um, due to low prices. Crop insurance payments here, um, this shows in 2016, as of middle of January, there's $20 million paid out in indemnities compared to um, a total in 2015 of 57 million and look at um, in 2012, our, the drought year was almost um, 450 plus million dollars paid out in Wisconsin. What you see here are the number of policies that paid in the state by crop. And then these are the percentages of those policies as of a whole of all the policies in the state. And then the average indemnity per um, policy that was paid. What you see is um, some large payouts for um, apples, $122,000 for uh, 10 policies. That's a big loss for our apple growers this year. Um, another big one is the snap beans, sweet corn, and green beans are big processing vegetables. A lot of farmers receive payments and they were pretty substantial. 15 to 30,000 was the average. The other one that was hit big was cranberry, actually. There was a large hail event that went through. Um, five or 10 growers received $65,000 as the average loss. Farmers are always better off not collecting these payments because on top of these losses that they were compensated for, there's a deductible, usually 25% or more. Um, you can see um, the large acreage crops like corn received large payments, but on a per policy, only not even a thousand farmers were paid. Um, and the payments are much lower. But in general, it was not a large loss year for crop insurance in 2016. Now we're gonna look at cash receipts. This is for dairy and the solid 
maroon line is um, USDA data at the um, Wisconsin level. And then the um, blue dotted line is the projection for 2016 based off of the relationship historically between the US and the state numbers. Projection is for 2016 is a, dec a decline. This would be the um, second year in a row of a decline. This would be for dairy falling below $5 billion. Here's um, cattle. Um, this would be for beef cattle. And um, the state has been bucking the national trend, but it looks like now I'm projecting a decrease for 2016 um, down um, to like almost $1.5 billion. Corn is flat compared to last year and the last couple of years. And this is the revenue now, not cost or not um, income. And it's because we had such a large yield. I set a state record, 178 um, bushels per acre was the average. Um, this is 14 bushels above the um, average for last year. And that's what saved a lot of farmers. Um, same thing happens on soybeans. We'll see the numbers in a second. But um, I've talked to several county agents and um, in the extension um, and then um, some of the bankers. And that's definitely helped farmers cash flow this year was these really high yields. Um, saying 350 for a bushel and these extra 14 bushels per acre is about $50 an acre for farmers just from the corn with these high yields. This is soybeans and the same thing here. 55 bushels per acre is the state average. Again, a, a, a a new record for the state, five and a half bushels above last year's um, yields. Um, that's almost $50 an acre again at $9 a bean um, bushel. And you can see the actual increase slightly of our projections for the 2016. And this happens at the national level as well. Um, but you put this all together, This once you subtract out costs, um, I'm projecting um, somewhere around almost not quite $2 billion as Wisconsin's net farm income. There's some uncertainty about that. Somewhere between 1.7 and 2.1 billion would be a good guess. But you can see it's really been a long-term decline since 2011, um, and you know just a 23% decline from last year alone. And this is not good for the state. This is a definite stressor financially on the state. So that's looking backward at what happened in 2016, trying to project our farm income here early in January. Um, let's look at costs now. This is for the coming year. These are data from um, the University of Illinois Farm Business Farm Management Association. It's a large organization that many states or many farmers in the state of Illinois belong to. And this is for Northern Illinois, so very similar to our Southern Wisconsin production um, conditions. And the red line here is the cost on a per bushel basis. And then the green lines are the price that the farm price um, per bushel. Um, these would have been back in November of, this would still be November of 2016. So every year in November, they do these um, projections of what the cost of production will be on a per bushel basis and the um, projected farm level price. You can see it's been negative margins for corn the last several years. Um, soybeans negative, but closer to zero. Um, and this is the same thing they're projecting for this year back in November, um, a gap of a farm price for corn here, roughly 350, but a farm cost of over almost 450 a bushel. Soybeans, the farm price about um, $9 and then the price slightly above that. Um, looking at the breakout of where these costs are in terms of proportion of the um, paid out to different categories in these budgets, you can see the overall corn budget, $840 an acre roughly. Land is the biggest um, cost here. This is $258 um, an acre for land rent is the average I, that was used for this. Machinery is another big cost at 16%, seed 15%, and those are nutrients, the other big one. That's for corn. You go to the other one, soybean over here. It's about 575. They're still paying the same land rent. And so land now is 40% of the cost. Um, machinery is another big one, 20% and then seed. Um, what I'd like to do now is take a look at these categories, what, the, what these trends are, and then make some assumptions about what's going on in Wisconsin. This is Wisconsin land values and the other parts of the state here, or I'm sorry, the US. You can see Wisconsin actually went up 1%, um, 47, $4,750 would be the per acre land um, value. Um, that's what it is, a $50 per acre increase and at 1.1%, but it, it bucks the trend regionally. Um, these are all decreases in these other parts of the um, um, US. Um, there is a, a upswing here in Michigan or um, Missouri, but and what's going on here is um, my understanding is it's driven by dairy. Our dairy industry is still very strong and dairy prices look good. Um, we'll see in a second here. Um, and it, it seems to into keeping our land values up. You look at some of these um, northern plains, Kansas has got a big loss. Nebraska's got big drops. That's where there's some real big land value adjustments happening. Um, these are um, rental rates now. Um, these are from USDA NAS, and these would be the average for the uh, different crop reporting districts. And what I really want to emphasize are these changes over the last few years, 2014 to 2016. 
and then think about where they're going in 2017. This is across the southern states or southern row of counties, um, crop reporting districts. So we'll see it on a map here in a second. You can pick your county out. But in general, land um, rental rates have been creep are still creeping up in 2016 relative to 2014. I expect these to stay flat or soften a little into 2017. But you can see um, all the, the south central part of the state has got the highest rents here at 170 is the average. And then you can see all the way down to um, looks like a little bit over like maybe 135 in um, the southeastern part of the state. These are averages, not the good farmland will pay obviously more than this. Um, poor farmland is less than this. Here's the central part of the state. And what you see here is the higher quality land. East central is still going. The rents are still rising, but we've already seen a drop happening here in the east central. I'm sorry, the west central and the central part of the state. Uh, softening. I expect that um, East Central to soften, maybe even go downward, and these other two to continue downward trends. Here's the northern part of the state, very flat still, um, probably downward a little bit. I would expect this trend to go on into 2017. These are still going upwards. Maybe this will soften. You can see the northeastern part of the state has got some um, higher um, um, land rents are going up, and I'm thinking this is partially driven by dairy. Overall, my assessment is these land rental rates stay high or continue upward, particularly in areas where there's um, demand for dairy um, because the dairy production needs the, um, the forage and then there's also the need for spreading of manure. Irrigated land, um, you can see the central part of the state, the central sands is still creeping up at almost, I think it's 240 was the rental rate average for 2016. Um, this is driven largely by the potatoes and vegetables, but also uh, corn for silage um, and grain. The rest of the state, it's definitely had a strong downward drop um, for rental rates on irrigated land. So you look at these rates, so you can see as you go from the northern part of the state down to the southern part of the state as the rents go up, here's your map of the crop reporting districts, and then here's the irrigated land. And um, overall though, the land, value, land rents are driven by the ability to grow corn um, in terms of its value. Let's look at these different um, categories here. And what we have here are um, machinery and seed costs, the trends. This is from the University of Illinois um, Farm Business Farm Management Association data over the last 10 years, and then projections into 2017. You see machinery costs were higher and have crept down for corn and soy, and so whereas seed costs remain flat. Machinery costs are going down, I think, largely because farmers are cutting back, finding cheaper ways to do things. Um, there hasn't been a major drop in machinery prices in some sense, except for the drop in demand for farm machinery, whereas seed prices have remained solid. And so um, the, the seed companies themselves are under tremendous pressure financially. I'm thinking of the mergers of Dow DuPont or Bayer and Monsanto, um, Syngenta being bought by ChemChina. These are all, these companies are under tremendous financial pressure. And so the seed prices have not come down. Looking at nutrients, you can see corn has a much higher per acre cost and these have been coming down. Soybeans is coming down, um, whereas pest control, again, remain flat for corn and a little bit downward pressure on soybeans. Nutrients is primarily, I believe, driven by lower prices. You know, looking at what's happened with nitrogen prices in particular, they've really been dropping relative to a few years ago. Whereas pest control, uh, herbicide is a major component of that. And I think we're, people have, I've talked to, we're dealing with um, herbicide resistant weeds. And so farmers herbicide costs are going up. This is reflected also in Northern Illinois, the same issue is going on. So you put this all together and you look at expected margins. Now these are the expected margin on a per bushel basis. Um, so you can see the corn margin is a loss of 87 cents per bushel, soybean at 33 cents a bushel. You'll look back at those few slides um, with the the, the cost per bushel and the cost per um, the, the price per bushel. Um, the margin for soy is pretty low, um, 33 cent loss. Um, that was assuming 9.50, $9 beans. Prices are probably higher than that. So I expect farmers are looking at positive margins for soybeans. Corn was 3.50 and um, hasn't changed too much at the farm level. So this 87 cent per bushel loss is very common, I think still for most farmers, what they're expecting. You put this on a per acre basis, soybeans roughly a break even deal. Um, now, especially with slightly higher farm prices, corn is still a large loss. Um, and I expect this to hold in Wisconsin. Switching from corn and soybeans over to dairy, these are the USDA data on a monthly basis um, for the operating costs and then the overall total cost of production for milk on a per hundred weight basis. And the key to note here is this is the full cost of production, paying a full fair rate of return for the farmer's management skills and for all the assets used in the production. You can see it's somewhere in this um, mid 20s and then the operating costs are you know, $14 per hundred weight. Um, but they're, it's flat, they haven't been up or down really too much. Um, so putting this all back together, um, 
Wisconsin's average break-even costs, I'm guessing for corn, are roughly in that 420 to 460 range for many farmers, whereas soybeans, it's in the 920 to 960. Depends on the specifics of your situation. Um, some farmers will have higher, some will have lower. Um, you can see land rent will be a big issue there. You saw those um, pie charts with the proportion of costs tied up in land. If you're paying lower land rents, you're gonna have lower costs. Um, the other big one would be machinery. Dairy, the, um, for many farmers in the state, is probably in that 21 to $24 per hundred weight. Again, that's the full cost of production, not just the operating cost, and it's paying yourself and your assets a fair return. Really what this means is many Wisconsin farmers are expecting negative margins in 2017. It's gonna be another bad year. Um, and I really, the question I've been starting to ask and hearing other people ask is how long can this go on? Um, we'll touch back on that again at the end, but you can see here already, um, these are looking at loan delinquencies and unemployment data for the, at the national level and the ag side. So the black line here is the US national um, unemployment rate. Um, the green line is the um, loan delinquencies on real estate loans and agriculture. And the maroon line is the delinquency rate on um, non real estate loans. Think of them as operating loans. What you see here is the Great Recession. We had the big up spike in um, unemployment and then it slowly come back down again. And then a few years later is when loan delinquency rates spiked in agriculture. And what I interpret this as is um, there were a lot of farms out there that were um, subsidizing really their operation with their off-farm income. And when they lost those jobs, they were no longer able to subsidize that off-farm, use that off-farm income to subsidize themselves. And so eventually some of them became delinquent on their loans. And that's what um, drove that spike a few years later in both um, real estate and non-real estate loans. But that's largely come under control as the unemployment rate's fallen. Um, these are what I would think of as smaller farmers who have two jobs to support themselves and to, to live. Looking specifically at Wisconsin here now, what you see is something a little bit different. We still see this, the green and maroon lines are the same. The blue line now is um, uh, chapter 12 bankruptcies in the state. And you can see it's it's been gyrating around, but it's been largely off trend. There's no real trend. It's been flat since the Great Recession. It just gyrates all over. But you see the green and maroon line show um, the big spike after the Great Recession, and then those have flattened out. The one I really want to emphasize is these non-real estate loans, operating loans. The, essentially, the delinquency rate is zero for the last several years. What that, uh, what that means is um, banks are not giving operating loans unless they see a viable plan to repay it. Um, and this is partially with the Great Recession, there's been rules changed in the lending industry. Even if you have a strong balance sheet, lots of equity you can borrow against, if, you, if the plant, borrowing the money to plant the crop doesn't look like it's gonna make a return, the banks won't give you the money. Um, I've been talking to some of the bankers and out and talking, and this is a reality for some farmers where they are not getting operating loans. Um, after they go to the big banks, they come to the community banks, and the community, community banks are rejecting them as well because that's how the lending rules work. Um, this is again nationally now. This is some slightly different data. The blue dots are U.S. national farm income up through 2016. That would be that USDA projection. projection. And then FAPRI, the Food and Ag Policy Research Institute um, at the University of Missouri has the um, next three years, roughly $70 billion, about the same as it's been. Um, so no big gains projected in farm income. And these blue bars are the demand in loans um, at the farm level as a percentage change from the previous year. And what you see here is, again, they're six, seven, eight percent more than they demanded last year at that same time period um, is what's been happening. So what that means is farm income has fallen and how would a farmer's been compensating is by demanding more loans to make up for needing operating funds. So putting this all together, it's very clear to me that farmers are financially stressed by these negative margins, but so far most farmers have been managing it. What I'm looking at are those delinquency rates. The loan delinquency rates are low in Wisconsin, and what that means is banks are not giving loans unless they see a viable plan for repayment. What I think that means for 2017 is more soybeans and forage um, for some Wisconsin farmers. They're not going to have the capital to put in a um, corn crop, for say, say because it just they won't have the, the money. They'll have to put in a lower cost crop. Prices for soybeans are looking better as well, and um, dairy industry is strong. There will be a market for forage. Um, really, though, a lot of farmers, there's a lot of operating capital that's gone. Their liquidity is, is gone. Um, and so the ag loan demand is up, and those debt-to-asset ratios are climbing. Longer term, this can't go on. I Two to three more years is what I've been hearing from some farmers, and we're going to be at the start of a crisis. Um, I think it'll hit more out in the Great Plains, more than it will here. I'm thinking like Kansas and Nebraska, those, those land values are falling quickly. Um, that's really going to upset some balance sheets. So far here, our state's been a little bit 
insulated from these trends because of the um, dairy industry. But if dairy industry has a, goes into some lower prices quickly, we will be in the same position. So um, thanks for your attention, um, and come, please come next year. We'll see, it'll be in January of 2018.